everybody so i appreciate you watching the last video of me introducing these mpp solar hybrid charger inverters and so i want to share a little bit more about them in a little bit more detail to maybe help somebody else as they're looking to maybe make a purchase and they want something this brand or similar to these So again, these are 24 volt and these are 4,000 watt output each. Yes, I know you're going to say, why didn't you go with 48 volt? It's better. Um, well, let's start from the bottom there. 12 volt is just not going to suffice for what I want. 24 volt will. 48 volt was going to put me up... Um, into a, a range on the batteries of what I'm wanting to use that I just didn't want at the time. Um, so let me explain that one. Right now as it stands, I have already a huge 12 volt solar lead acid battery over there. All I would need to do was buy one more of those. And um, the one I have is just recently been bought so it was still fresh enough to buy another one put with it let them balance with each other put those two into a series and i would have the combined voltage of 24 volts without putting out a whole lot of money at this point and the reason that i'm saying that is because i'm going to put a tesla model s battery to these and that tesla model model s cell is a 24 volt cell for me to run 48 i would have to buy two of those tesla model s batteries which is now going to start turning into a substantial investment and i would have to again run those in a series so the one model s battery for the size system that i need at this time is just fine So meanwhile, before I get that Model S battery here over into the Philippines, just buying a second big solar lead acid battery and combine it with the one that I just recently bought before it gets too old, you know, because you need to run those. Uh, the age needs to be about the same, the dimension and capacity and things that happen there. So I said, I'll go ahead and buy a second one now. I can still use that. It'll probably get me many years of service, even if I want to put a secondary system together somewhere, like right here at this house, to run part of the load here at this house. I can. And uh, I could use those until their life is used up. Maybe I'll buy another one of these just like this, run it here at this house until we leave here, and uh, then I can combine it over into my system and grow the system at the house with that. But meanwhile, I can go ahead and try to use up more of the life of those lead acid batteries. So that was my reasoning of sticking with the lead acid until I get the Model S battery here. It's also my reasoning that I only want a 24 volt system. So there you have it. Now, the next thing about this is you'll run these two parallel boards inside. They have to communicate with each other. So you have these parallel boards, there's two of them here. I have to install this board into each one of these. And then you're going to have cables that's going to cross connect right here. These two cables will cross connect from port to port on these two boards. From here and here and here and here. So here's the cables that came for that. And then you're going to have an interface that you can uh, connect, like your laptop, for instance, uh, up there, and, and run the software, which comes right here. 
Uh, you can also download the software offline. Because some, some of your laptops maybe don't have a DVD player anymore. So you can also just directly download their software. And I'll tell you something else to watch out for. Uh, I don't know yet because I haven't loaded it yet. But sometimes they have been known to send out the wrong software versus the model that you purchased. So make sure that they sent you the correct software. If not, just go to their website and download it. It's probably easier just to download it anyway. As well as you'll also have this USB cable here as well. Um, you also have your other leads for getting this tied together into a um, stackable system. So it comes with all the cables here that you need. So another thing on these units here is this panel right here comes off and you have access to get in here to all your connections and to put those uh, additional boards in as well. They'll go in right here, you remove this plate and that's where you're going to have access to those boards. So what you will be able to do once you remove that is also you'll be able to run your positive and negative DC cables in right here. You really need to put a disconnect right below that I mean absolutely put a disconnect I've got mine on order it just has not come in yet so then the next thing you're gonna have is your power coming in from your solar array and that is your PV input so those leads will go in here underneath the lugs and be tightened down as well right here and again it needs to be able to cut off that's what this box here is for see this is a PV array DC isolator and you want to make sure the one you buy is rated high enough to carry the input voltage and amperage that your panels are configured for. Uh, don't want to buy one undersized and burn it up. So this one here, it, it does have the capacity that I need for my solar array to operate it safely. So again, you need to mount this below the unit. And another suggestion is try to keep all your cable runs as short as possible. You know, you don't want to put this thing far away up over somewhere. Anytime you're adding additional wire, you're adding power loss. So uh, keep everything kind of nearby where it's still serviceable, but not too spread out. So again, I want to just kind of reiterate, be sure that you put fuses and disconnects. You want this disconnect, you want fuses, you want a, a DC disconnect. Now over here, you have AC output. That output is what will go to power all the things that you want to power off of this unit. Maybe you want to take it to a service panel and uh, split it out off breakers of the different directions it's going. Maybe you want to put a main in, which is what I'm doing. I've already bought a uh, service panel that's going to be just for this and it's going to have a main and then from that main it'll have breakers for the different directions that I want to send this power. Um, you could put a main in only and then send that main onto an existing service panel maybe you have. So that'll be where that goes. And then AC input. Now it's AC input. This can connect to the grid but it's not net metering this is not sharing out power and charging out to the grid what this can do is if you have um, your battery bank and your uh, photo cells and all going and say it's a really cloudy days day after day and you can't get enough sun you can't get your batteries charged up you can actually borrow power from the electrical grid take power in just like if this was an appliance and this has a battery charger inside of it and it will switch over and start charging your batteries from the grid now you don't have to connect this this is not a must you can completely keep this off grid but if you do have the grid still there at your place and you want that backup to be able to use the power from the grid if your batteries go too low you don't have enough solar you can do that so then moving on down here, you see this connector here? This is for connecting this to a generator. And so if you got a dry contact switch, 
once again, if you don't want to use this AC input as a backup off the grid and you're completely off grid, but you have a generator and that generator has a dry contact uh, switch that can start it, this will crank up your generator, charge your battery bank off the generator when it's full, it'll shut it back off. Or if the clouds clear away and your PV array starts putting out enough power and it sees it's charging it sufficiently, it'll turn your generator back off. But you may have those days it's really gloomy, dark, uh, according to what part of the world you're in. You may even have a lot of snow or something and you can't get up there and clear your panels. You have still something for a backup there. So that's what the nice thing is about this too is it has the start stop for dry contact for a generator. So that's another reason that I bought this. I do have a generator here at the property and uh, I will be adding that generator on here to start and stop as a backup. Just never know, right? Now when you buy these MPP uh, hybrid inverters, when you're looking at the picture online, they all look about the same, but when you actually receive them, the size and the weight of these are greatly different. Uh, you just won't realize, you know, a 12 volt one may only have half the depth and way smaller size and weight than what these 24 volt or 48 volt units do. Um, so don't don't be fooled like all oh, they all look like they're the same and they just maybe changed a few parts inside. No, you're buying a very large inverter right here, um, and these are heavy. I mean, the weight is pretty substantial to these. They only have it where you'll run a bolt in and hang them right here and just with a foot down here at the bottom with no way to anchor. anchor at the bottom. Um, this is probably sufficient. Some people will add a strap around and strap them or they'll run uh, a Velcro strip across the back. Um, I don't, I don't really know that it needs it. If you put the appropriate hanger up here and it's a nice large heavy bolt through there, not just a little old Phillips head drywall screw, these should suffice for everything that you need. These have cooling fans inside, so they are going to produce some noise when they're cooling off and you're going to have to listen to that fan. And so where you place these, Make sure that it's not in a place that the sound of those cooling fans are going to bother you or disturb you. But at the same time, don't put them in too restrictive of a closure that you're going to actually just cause more heat to concentrate in there. These need to breathe. That's why they have air grills all around. Also, don't put them in a really dusty or humid condition. These are still like computer boards, like bread boards inside in there. Those electronics do not need a whole lot of humidity on them. So placement is very important, or again, you're gonna to lead to failure. That's not gonna be failure of the product, it's gonna be failure of the installer, the user. So think of those things. Uh, if you put these inside an enclosure, you're probably gonna cause excessive heat. They need to be out in the open, but they need to be in a fairly clean environment. Um, you could possibly build an enclosure that has um, screening on the side of it with some type of filter material, but again, you're restricting that natural airflow. The main thing is just keep them out of a really dusty environment. And occasionally, you might want to power it all down and blow them out. I have a friend here nearby that his father's running a, a large system with these. He's had it going, I think they said for five years right now, and they've never had one of these inverters to fail. They've uh, held up well, but what they occasionally do is they unscrew the cover, they uh, take an air hose, and they blow them all out. And I think that's a smart thing they're doing. It's like anything. You've got to give it some service. Just like your car, your motorcycle, you need to provide some service to it. Don't just stick it up there and forget about it. The dust bunnies build up on the board. They cause static energy. The energy sparks across the different parts, different diodes and transistors causes it to blow. Um, also causes heat up in there. So again, you need to do your due diligence to keep these things clean and taken care of. Don't just slap it up, 
wiring it live and hot with no disconnects, no fuses, oversized fuses and things, and then whine when they blow out. So uh, I know I'm being really straightforward about that, but it's just the all honesty truth. Um, if you can't afford to buy the size system you need, wait till you can. Just wait till you can. Do not underbuy. And if you are going to go ahead and buy, do as I did. Make sure that it's something that's expandable. So as your power consumption increases, you can increase your photo array outside and you can increase your wattage capacity as I can do right here. That is very important. So whatever you initially buy, make sure it's expandable. All right, so I guess that's going to wrap it up on this episode here. I am going to make an episode also about covering the connection between the two of the parallel boards on there. So stick with me on that if you want to learn more about these MPP hybrid uh, solar inverters that you can buy. I'm going to look up and see if I can find a link to share down in the description on some of these. If I don't get in there today, I'll back up and get it in these videos here in the future. Or just write me and I'll send you um, a link as well if you want to look up these particular ones. and uh, Or maybe you just write me if you want to know a little bit more about them. Because there's several different models of them, you know. You've got um, many different features that some have that some don't. They may all look like the same box on the outside just by eyeball look, you know. But what's inside can be totally different. The features they offer can be totally different there's actually quite a few combinations of ways you can have these things so feel free to ask questions i might know the answer i might not but it might start a conversation that somebody else will chime in and help out on please subscribe please share hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell we appreciate it a lot the support helps a lot there's quite a bit of time involved sometimes in these videos and i would appreciate to have all the support we can get. So I thank you very much. Have a great day, evening, night, wherever you are.